Welcome to the place where we learn about and learn from the leaders in our field who are powering human creativity. I am Aaron Dworkin, and this is Arts Engines. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me here on Arts Engines. Today's guest is Simon Woods, who serves as the president and CEO of the League of American Orchestras. Simon, welcome to the show. Thanks, Aaron. Great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. So, well, it's so great to, to have you on the show. And obviously, I've had the opportunity to be able to, to work with you and know your leadership in so many different capacities, um, leading, you know, many different of, you know, the best orchestras, uh, not just in the country, but the world. Um, and so I thought, why don't we just delve right in um, to kind of uh, talking about just orchestra leadership um, and the field itself. You know, you come from this perspective of having done this and led a number of orchestras in some very different types of communities. Mm -hmm. And if you were to kind of describe to our audience, you know, here's the one or two key things that really are, you know, if you nail these as an orchestral leader, then you're probably going to come away leaving a better orchestra than you found it kind of thing. Well, for me, it starts and ends with culture. I've always been somebody who, who believes that um, great leadership comes from culture and from having the right people. It's just, it is actually, uh, that of course is an oversimplification, but actually there's probably no single thing that you can do to create success greater than, than, than build an amazing culture, build a culture that is collaborative, build a culture that is inclusive, build a culture where people feel like they understand what their role is in the bigger mission. Um, so for me, you know, in something in every organization I've ever, ever done, I've always started with the people in the culture, getting the right people in the organization um, and then building the right culture. And, you know, we know that orchestras have had their challenges over the years and decades with, with cultural issues. Um, and, you know, of course, all organizations have challenges with cultural issues. But in the end, if you can crack that, if you can build places that people want to work in and they want to, and they want to create great music in and they want to support the creation of great music in, you have just such a huge head start in uh, executing on your mission. Huh. So I'd love to delve a little bit further into that because I am sure that we have some viewers who are definitely in leadership positions, whether in academia or in orchestral leadership, where they're working in environments where there's tenure, where there are people who, if you will, are going to be there for a long time. Um, and so curious for those who may have come in and said, okay, I wanna bring about uh, an evolution of the culture for this institution, et cetera, or look at relevance issues, things like that. And I'm coming into an academic setting where my faculty are tenured, I'm coming into an orchestral you know, situation and my membership is tenured. Um, any thoughts about that or kernels of wisdom for leaders who may be looking at that or in the midst of attempting to bring about that kind of cultural evolution that you're talking about? Well, I do, I do think as a, as a leader, whatever environment you're in, if you're in an orchestra or if you're in an academic environment, you are in a sense on stage. The second you open your mouth in the very first moment when you join an organization, you are on stage and you are being scrutinized, just like an oboist playing a, you know, playing a great solo in a symphony. You, you are on stage and you're being scrutinized. So, so, and what you say will be deconstructed and will be thought about and will reflect, be reflected upon. And so for me, um, it's very important to be thoughtful about how you how you present your values to the world, and I do think it is about values. And you know, I and it's it's not only about how how you present yourself, but it's how the people who represent you in the organization show up. And so, it's it's th those early decisions you make in an organization about who you who you hire are really critical because if you and your you know the people who are closest to you who are leading the organization show up with humility and with a sense of inclusion and with a willingness to to welcome all voices then 
um, you, you know, you you start yourself off on on the on on the process of modeling modeling the kind of kind of values you want the organization to have, and you hope that you know after a while that begins to to trickle down. But there's no question that you know you have to show up. You have to show up as 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 for what you believe in. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And so. You know, looking at the fact that we still find ourselves in uh, the midst of either pandemic slash endemic uh, going on, from your perspective, you know, leading the service organization, looking at the entire field, um, are you optimistic? Are you pessimistic? Where do you think things are, are leading, especially as we look, you know, six months from now, you know, entering next season? I'm actually pretty optimistic. I mean, of course, if we're talking about the pandemic, you know, I think that during the fall, we all had a sense that we were on a good trajectory and that was rudely interrupted. Um, but I think if we look at the numbers now, we can feel relatively positive about where we're heading. And I really do believe that come the spring and summer, we'll be in a different place. But, um, you know, the, the the critical thing is how, for me, is, is I, I can be, I'm very optimistic about the future because I think that we have learned through the pandemic this remarkable skill of, um, you know, what I would call sort of a sort of a resilience, but also at the same time a flexibility and a responsiveness, kind of resilient responsiveness. And what's interesting, you know, I was talking to our board the other day just about this, and I said, you know, each time one of these waves of of pandemic comes at us, we're better at dealing with it the last than the last time. And whether that's, um, you know, whether that's an orchestra or whether that's the League of American Orchestras or whether that's every other nonprofit, you know, we're having this sort of adaptability, which is which we which we probably never have before. And if I look back at my tenure leading orchestras, you know, five years ago, we wouldn't have been able to accomplish remotely what orchestras have achieved this past two years. And I have like endless, endless admiration, I mean, incredible admiration for people doing the CEO jobs in orchestras right now for how they've, they've sort of built that muscle of a adaptability and and you know it's not over i i said to the board the other day and i wasn't kind of joking we, we we may begin to see the die down of this pandemic but we have to be ready for the next pandemic and we have to be ready for crisis from crises from climate change and social unrest and who knows in you know global wars we, we you know we have to, our world has, has changed but i think that that sort of responsiveness and our ability to adapt actually is a critical muscle that we have built in this last two years, which which makes me very optimistic about us weathering all the things that are going to get thrown at us in the coming years. Cool, cool. Well, I, I love the optimism for, for sure and definitely very much looking forward and, and, and it's so agree that we've been able to learn so much in this process and are definitely better positioned to address challenges moving forward. Um, so kind of pivoting a little bit, the league obviously is deeply invested in preparing future leadership uh, yeah. for, uh, for the field. And one of those great programs is the, is the Essentials of Orchestra Management. Yeah. I'm just wondering for anyone in our audience who's not familiar, could you just kind of share just a little background sure. on it and, and why it's so important to the league? Sure. So Essentials of Orchestra Management is one of the most beloved programs that the league runs and it's a program for people who are sort of finding their way into leadership programs uh, within the field and it's been going for decades um, and uh, there are people from this program literally right across our field uh, over 450 people have been have been through this program who are working in in different jobs in our field so it's really had you know, in, in, a, in addition to the kind of individual impacts it makes on people in a very inspiring way, which we know about, it's also had a real change um, impact across the field. And it's basically a kind of a 10 day intensive on, uh, on orchestra management. But it's changed a lot in the last few years since I've been involved in it. In the old days, it was very much a kind of, a, a, how can I describe it? It was, a, it was a sort of a, more about the imparting of wisdom than anything else. Today, we've sort of pivoted to use that word, which I don't really like, but whatever. We've sort of pivoted into it, into it also being a kind of a think tank, because we recognize now that the world has just so acutely changed and the orchestras are changing and that there are critical issues which which have a bearing on every aspect of our business. The most obvious one being race equity, which is a you know an issue that, as you know, at the league we're we're all in on. Um, and so, taking these big sort of seismic issues and really putting them in front of this class of thirty people and saying, 
how does this change our future? How do you how do we imagine a future which is which is racially different, which is different in the way we think about our mission, about the way we think about communities? Asking those big questions in the class, as well as sort of imparting the kind of sense of effective practice that has been learned over many decades. That's that that's what it's all about. It's very it's a very exciting program, and and people just people who participate in it just love it. All right. Awesome. Awesome. And yet it is truly it has shaped so many of the key leaders in the field. Um, mm -hmm. And so and you mentioned uh, we're running a little short on time, but I wanted to at least because, of course, you raised and the league has been so deeply now engaged, especially in recent years in work around DE&I um, and including, of course, key partnerships with Sphinx. And just wondering for our audience, any sense or thoughts that, that you have about DE&I as it relates to the field and especially any, you know, evolutions you know perspective from the league well look i mean i've been working in american orchestras for like 25 years now and i can tell you that i've never felt the impetus for change like i feel it now it is there is really an energy out there to create a future that looks different to the past because we know that the past for all its great things and all the beauty that it's provided and all the inspiration provided we know that it it, it, it won't do as it as it relates to the way society looks today. And so um, that process of change is absolutely critical. Um, my only feeling is that for all the good things going on, we, we, you know, we, we need to still work very hard and we probably need to move faster. You know, we still have, um, you know, uh, still have major issues of um, race equity and inclusion, which we need to address in our field. And I'm, and I'm incredibly encouraged by where we are. But we've also got a lot of work to do and we can't be complacent and and you know so and we as as, as the league you, you know our job is to provide the resources and provide the tools and provide the help for orchestras to uh to make change you know in the way that works for them um that's our that is our critical role in this so uh, i am i am actually optimistic i think the energy is there now i want to see it you know translated into even more kind of concrete change in action it's it is exciting though Definitely, definitely. Um, and so uh, just before we go, because I know we're just about out of time, but I always like to ask of leaders, you know, you have definitely been, whether it's, you know, leading the service organization for the entire field of orchestras, which bring different perspectives. There's got to be some challenging days where there's conflicting opinions and, and partnerships you need to manage and collaborations, etc. And of course, in many of your previous roles, how and or where as a leader do you draw upon for inspiration for strength during the tough days the ones where it's like how are we going to overcome this how are we going to surmount it how do you draw on that support system as a leader well i'll say two things first of all i always go back to the music you know music I'm, i've been you know music has been my life you know since i was 10 years old and and uh, it always will be and I always encourage everybody that even at the league when we're sort of working one step removed from actual performing arts you know we have to always stay connected back to the music and so the music for me is a constant inspiration the other thing I'll say is you have to walk away and and for me um, self-care is probably the biggest thing that we've learned during during the pandemic. That that you know, it's only sometimes when you when you walk away from a problem, um, you walk away from a tension or a conflict or a difficult decision, uh, that that the solution appears to you. So whatever it is, when you walk away, whether it's exercise or whether it's in my case, it's cooking. I love to cook. Um, you know, chopping onions and celery and carrots is very therapeutic for me. Whatever it is that you do. That, that self-care, that walking away, that actually is not avoiding, that is actually work because it is actually gonna take you nearer to the answer. Wow, thank you so much. Um, and definitely, I think very, very helpful and, and inspiring to leaders who sometimes find themselves in some really challenging situations. Simon Woods, you truly are one of the arts engines who is powering human creativity in our world. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Aaron. So nice talking to you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.